In this video, we're gonna find the sheer capacity of a reinforced concrete T-beam. My name is Tyler Lay and I'm a concrete maniac. So in this problem, we're gonna find the sheer capacity of this member. It's a T-beam. I'm showing the dimensions in um, English units. If you are an SI person, I apologize, but that's what my class is being taught in this semester. We see the dimensions all the way around of, of the T-beam. We're using number four ties three number 11 bars at the bottom. And here is the elevation view, it's 15 foot long, and these number four bars are at eight inch spacing. Now this is an internal exposure, so the cover is one and a half inches, and the um, strength of the concrete is 5,000 PSI. Now, we first have to find the D. This is the distance from the compression fiber to the centroid of the tension steel. This is the height of the member, which is 36 inches, minus the cover, which is one and a half inches, minus the size of the stirrup, that's a number four bar, and the diameter of a number four bar is half an inch, and then it's one half the diameter of the longitudinal bar, or a number 11 bar in this problem. So if you calculate this whole thing, it's 33.3 .3 inches. So the next thing to do is you calculate your capacity of your concrete, V sub C, which is equal to two square root of F prime C, BWD. Now what is BW? BW is the width of the web, the width of the web, that's important. So in this problem, it's gonna be two times the square root of 5,000, all divided by 1,000, multiplied by BW. Now, what, what's BW? Well, let's go up here and look. Well, this is the B of the flange, 40. This is the B of the web, 16, and BW is B of, B of the web. That's what we end up using. So this number now is 16 inches, and then that is multiplied by 33.3 .3 inches for the D, and the whole thing is then equal to 75.3 kips, 75.3 kips. That's what V sub C is. Now let's find V sub S. V sub S, that is the capacity of the steel in shear, the contribution of the steel in shear. That's equal to A V F Y D all divided by S. That is the equation. Check previous videos if you wanna learn how that's derived. So to find AV, it is two times 0.2. Now, why is it two? Well, the area of a number four bar is 0.2 inches squared, and there are two legs, right? That's why it's two times 0.2. Then the FY is 60 KSI, my D is 33.3, .3, and my S, what is S again? Well, that is the spacing of the stirrups and that happens to be eight inches for this problem. And that whole thing is equal to 99.9 .9 kips. Now, what we have to do is we have to find our V sub N, that's the capacity of the member, is equal to V sub C plus V sub S, both of those. And that is equal to 75.3 kips, that is what my V sub C is, plus 99.9 .9 kips, that is what my V sub S is, and that whole thing together is 175 kips. Oh, cool. Well, now I've got to figure out which case I'm in. Case, you don't remember what I'm talking about? Well, this is in the notes, check this out. You should see this, we've talked about this in previous videos. You have to figure out if you're in zone A, B, C, D, or E. And that's all about comparing your V sub C to your V sub N. Again, check previous videos if you don't know what I'm talking about. V sub N is 175 kips. V sub C is 75.3 kips. And then V sub N over three is 58.3. So shown out here, I have written the V sub N, the V sub C, and the V N over three for my problem. Now, why am I picking these three? Because this is the bounds. This is what bounds zone C. And I can see I'm somewhere between V sub N and V N over three. Therefore, I am in case C or zone C. And therefore, in zone C, I get to use um, my calculated stirrup spacing, um, which happens to be nine, eight inches in this problem, S equals eight inches, or I will also compare it to D over two or 24 inches. 
and D over two happens to be 16.7 inches. And I picked the smaller of these three, the smaller. So I, I'm okay, everything is good, and I'm almost done, but I have to use my fee factor. To find my true capacity, the least of the capacity that I'm able to design for, I'm going to take my, my fee, Vn, which is equal to 0 0.75 times 175 kips, and that is equal to 131.4 kips. And now that is my capacity of that member. But now what, what would happen? What would happen if I increased my S to D or 33.3? .3? What if I made that S larger? Well, capacity is going to change, right? Well, let's go ahead and figure out what that would be. Now, my V sub C isn't going to change. It's going to be the same thing it was before. It's going to be 75.3 kips. Now, my V sub S is going to be a little bit different. My V sub S is going to be A, V, F, Y, D over S. Same thing. Same equation, at least, but the things are going to be a little bit different. It's still going to be 2 times 0.2. My F, Y is still 60. My D is now 33.3. .3. And then now my S, at least the S I think I'm going to use, is 33.3 .3 inches. So if I calculate all that, I get 24 kips. Awesome. So I do the same thing I did before. V sub C is 75.3 kips. V sub S is 24 kips. And I get my V sub N to be equal to 98.4 kips. Ha, sweet. Now let's check out see which case I'm in. N is 98.4. My V sub C is 75.3. And my VN over 3 is 32.8. So if I compare them again, I'm still in zone C. You don't remember what I'm talking about? Check it out. So if I compare my V sub C to my VNs, my VNs, I'm somewhere between VN and VN over 3. I'm somewhere in here. There I will, therefore, I will be using D over 2 or 24 inches. I can either use, again, S, which is 33.3. .3. I can use D over 2, which was 16.7. Or I can use 24. And I have to pick the smallest. Uh-oh. 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 I can't use a spacing of 33.3 .3 inches. It's actually not allowed. I'm going to have to use a spacing of 16.7. And to actually find my true capacity, I would need to recalculate what my VS is. Oh, 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 oh man, you gotta watch out what assumptions you make. To, so to truly find the capacity, I would have to recalculate what my VS is. So I'm not gonna do that in this problem, but I'm just showing you the challenges and what you have to watch out for when you calculate the capacity of a reinforced concrete beam. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and leave me a comment below about your battles with the sheer capacity of reinforced concrete. And of course, check me out on Instagram and also Facebook at Concrete.Tyler. Take care. Bye-bye. It is awesome.